uh, which means they might take their shoes off in front of the enemy. Amen. Uh, they just get right at home with you, praise God. We just, we, we just glad to have you. God bless you. If you have your Bibles, I want to talk to you uh, this morning from something I've been teaching on Tuesday nights from the subject matter suddenly. From the subject matter suddenly. Acts chapter 2, verse number 1. Let me work real fast so I can, can help bring us up to uh, speed with respect to. Uh, do we have to did you get the PowerPoint up? Uh, so, so the subject matter, I, I emailed it to you so you can be working on that. Um, so I want to bring you up to speed, but I want you to understand Acts chapter 2 because it's powerful. It's powerful. Uh, it's, it's, it's big because it's going to help us uh, understand uh, the power of God and how God wants, wants to help each and every one of you this morning. And if you're looking for help from God this morning, you're in the right place. Amen. Now, I don't know what you came here for, but I came here to have an encounter with Christ. Amen. Amen. I, Amen. I came here this morning Amen. to give him glory and praise and to experience his, his power and the supernatural uh, to, 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 to inspire me and to invoke me to know that I can make it. No matter what I'm facing, I can make it. Because I don't know what you've been through. I don't, I don't know what you're going through. But I got a feeling all of us going through something. Amen. Uh, and, and it's good to know that God did not leave us comfortless. Uh, and, and so a lot of times when we're going through stuff, we find rooms to go sit in and, and the high out of because we don't want to face what's on the outside of our comfort zone. So it's interesting that, that, that we spend a whole lot of time uh, referring to the day of Pentecost, but that's not the teaching of the text. Uh, the teaching of the text is the power of God uh, in the midst of your circumstances. How do you, how do you address the whole world, the whole known world concerning the gospel of Christ? When you just witnessed uh, your Savior crucified on Calvary's cross, how do you move on when it seems like that all is lost and uh, it's just a few of you that are here and everybody else believes something else and, and somehow you, you, you've got to do something bigger than you can imagine that you're able to do. Have you ever faced an obstacle that's so big you just don't know how you're going to do it? Yeah. Have you ever had a problem that, that you looked at and said, I don't know how I'm going to make it through this, but I, I just know God going to do something. Amen. Yeah. There they are in this room, in the upper room, if you will, and, and, and there are a lot of rooms that some of you are in this morning because of fear. There's a lot of rooms that you're in because you're waiting on something. And, and sometimes I go into my room, but I'm not going in my room because I'm afraid. I'm going in my room because I'm waiting on something. Amen. I came here this morning because I'm waiting on something to happen. Uh, y'all didn't hear me. I came here this morning because I'm wait I believe God is alive and well. And I believe God has promised us something. And I didn't come here this morning because I had a few friends here, but I came here because I, there's no friend like Jesus. Amen. There's no friend. There's no friend who loves me in spite of me. And I came here because I want to have a close encounter with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm tired of playing. I'm tired of nonsense. If you don't get yours, I'm sorry. But I came here to get my praise on and give glory to God because God is showing up Somebody ought to say amen. amen. And what I need the preacher to tell me this morning, I don't need you to fuss at me this morning. I know what I need to work on. I don't need you rolling your eyes like you're preaching at me this morning. But what I need you to do is tell me how can I get connected with what's going to happen in Acts chapter 2. Because I'm messed up because I'm, I've been in this room since I was a child. I've been thinking like this since I was a child. I, I, I've been wearing it. I lose sleep at night. I find myself getting into myself sometimes. And I don't know what I do. And I need something to happen. And I need to happen in a flash. Amen. Amen. And so Luke says, Luke says, I'm going to tell you what happened. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. I, I'm going to witness it. Luke writes the letter to, we know it's Luke because he identifies Theophilus in, in Acts chapter 1. But he also says of the former treatise that I wrote unto you in Luke chapter 1, verse 3, Old Theophilus. And so we can make the connection that the author to the book of Acts is Luke. 
based on the fact he identifies the opposite of uh, 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 Luke chapter 1 and 3. And then he's in Acts chapter 1, he refers to the opposite again. And so the author of the book is Luke. And Luke is writing, he says, I want to tell you something uh, that you need to be mindful of, that, that whenever you are in one place, and on one accord, whenever your mind and your body and your soul are connected or aligned together that you can with God's will, suddenly things are going to happen in your life. Y'all miss it, didn't you? I'm trying to say, I've been, you know, I've been coming to church, but my mind hadn't really been, I, I, I've been in a pseudo I come to a building I call church, but when I get here, I'm still worried about stuff outside the church. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 I, I come here, I come here, and, and, and as soon as I get home, I'm the same person I was, and I go back to my room because I'm comfortable in there, and I've been playing for a long time, and I need something to happen in a flat, and Luke says they were all uh, in one place, uh, and in one accord, and suddenly, <laughs> the same people who could not stand, who ran, who, who pulled knives out, who cursed, who, who, who could not stand for Christ, who forsook him, who dove into the waters and went back fishing, who Jesus had to ask over and over again, Peter, do you love me? And Peter's response was, I got they love, I mean, I, I, I for real love, but I don't know they love you. I mean, I brotherly love you. That same Peter's in that room and found the Bible says, and suddenly he stood up and preached the first sermon on the day of Pentecost. I'm talking about a power that'll help you do something you ain't never did before when you get connected with the power of God. And I'm only talking to folks who can come with the spirit of God in mind because right now it sounds like I'm speaking tongues to you because you don't know what you came here for. You like a zombie, you just come in because it's time to come in. You don't have any idea what you're in here for. You know that it's Sunday and I had a call on Sunday. I both get up and come, but you got a whole lot of stuff going on. And I'm trying to tell you when you get your mind right, and you get your spirit right, and you get your soul at ease, something's going to happen in your life in the supernatural that has never happened before. You're going to shout like you never shouted before. You're going to clap your hands. Ain't know what you do. You're going to lift your hands to God because finally for once you come into the realization that I'm tired of playing. I am who I am. God, you help me. God bless me right where I am. And suddenly, the door Y'all under a lot of pressure, aren't you? I'm saying some stuff. Y'all look at me like I'm talking German. As a matter of fact, I look at the text in Acts chapter 2. He said, how is it that we hear him in our own tongues? I don't want no more children walking for no reason while I'm preaching. Praise God. Anyhow, just hold on one day. I'll be through in just a minute. And if you keep letting them walk, them up, that's five more minutes on the sermon for that. <laughs> just for that five more minutes. I, I was trying to get that five more minutes in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Hey, Y'all all right? Okay, so let, 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 I, let, let me slow down because I thought I was talking for the Holy Spirit. Y'all mad this morning. I got more men than him. Amen. Let me, let me, let me, let me. Uh, okay, so let me get you to see this. Acts chapter 20, 28, verse 6. Turn it in your Bibles. Maybe the word suddenly comes from a Greek word of feel. And the feel means that by the power of God. What you need in your life to turn your frown into a smile Amen. is the power of God. Amen. The reason that you had connected to the power of God is because you got so much stuff that's been happening in your history that you're afraid of this world instead of counting on the favor of God. You've been doing the same stuff, sitting in the upper room, going to church, and, and, and inside you're full of fear. And you have more confidence in this life than you do Christ. Some of us, all of us, black folks, are afraid of snakes. Amen. 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 And that's why I know there were black folk in the Bible because <coughs> and white folk in the Bible because because you didn't understand suddenly here God, God, you can't be afraid of sex I'm going to show you something in just a minute and, and, and if we're not afraid of sex we're we tired of struggling, can y'all say amen? amen 
We've been struggling a long time. Can't nobody say nobody see the trouble I've seen. Like we can. We can say that. Am I ready for that? <laughs> Amen. And so I'm staying in my room because I'm struggling. I'm going through some stuff. But the power of God, I want you to hear what I say this, is not on the inside. The power is given on the inside for you to take it to the outside of the world. Amen. They had to leave the room where they were sitting and go outside and preach to folk who were lost in the world. The power that God is about to give you is not for you to keep inside, but the power is for you to demonstrate and to put on display outside. Y'all not listen to that. They need to see how we handle struggle. They need to see how we handle getting sick people. In Acts chapter 26, watch this word suddenly again. Acts chapter 26, uh, we saw that verse number 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 seven. You'll find that here Paul was bitten by one of the most poisonous snakes. I asked. Now you know that there had been brothers in that text that the Bible would have read, and when the snake bit Paul, all the black people started running. <laughs> and they clearly departed from which coast they came from. The reason you know there were white folk in the text, though the Bible says that how be it when he was bitten by the snake, they stood and watched. <laughs> Praise God. Come on, y'all need to be trying to say they stood. If you get bit by a snake, uh-huh, and, 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 and I love you, brother, brother Alvin, but hold on, y'all, you bit by a snake, I'm gonna do the right thing. I'm going to get mine one more. <laughs> Praise God. But the text says, now watch this. Because your enemy, when, when, when he, when he, when he, when he, do you have my, 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 my serpent, my, 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 I want to show you this in text because it's such behavior. He said that they stood and watched, and then watch this, and, 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 and they were waiting for him, waiting for him to, to fall dead. And they were waiting for him to swell up and fall dead. And then they watched a little while longer to see if in fact he was going to die. And then a couple more black people came back. Because the text says that when he didn't die, that somebody said, this nigga a God. That's why he must be a God, amen. I mean, because see, it's, it's, it's certain reactions that we have to things that mess us up. How did he get bit by a snake? But here's the teaching of the text. You have been bitten by whatever you've been bit by in your life, and the enemy is watching to see if you fall. Amen. When you got your doctor's notice, the enemy bit you, but he looked to see if you had fallen dead yet. Do you have the, 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 the Komodo dragon? The Komodo dragon uh, is a type of lizard, a type of reptile that when he bites you, he don't just eat you, but he bites you. And he's standing back to watch you fall, to see if you're going to swell, swell and die. Your ex-boyfriend bit you. Then he stepped back and watched to see if you're going to cry yourself in the suicide. Uh, your ex-friend betrayed you told stuff they weren't supposed to tell, and then they stepped back to see if you're going to fall. The enemy is smitten you with illnesses and diseases, and he stepped back to see if you fail. But the text says in, in, in Acts chapter 28, that when he would have swollen and fell suddenly, that they were suddenly again, in a flash, God saved him. Y'all, y'all, this is what I'm saying right now. When you are down, when it seems like all is over, Suddenly, God will step into the picture and save your life. You're not listening to me right now. I don't care what you're going through. Suddenly, God will turn stuff around in your life. When folk thought you were dead, when folk thought it was over, when folk thought you didn't have a chance in the world, suddenly, God will step in and help you take on the sex in this world. You can look to see if I'm going to die if you want to. Suddenly, God will step in. When I'm down, It's some 
yourself that bit you right now. That messes you right now. That's got you messed up since you was a child. And you sit up here right now looking at me like, you ain't talking to me. Yes, I am. Yeah, yeah. There's some ways that you have that the enemy done bit you and messed you up. And if I ever give me a confident, mm, I'm trying, I'm trying to be nice. Y'all, somebody say, Lord God, my feet. While I run this race. Hey, Amen. I'm trying to get some help up in here. But listen, let me tell you something. How many of us have some stuff that hurts so bad that you know the enemy? There he is right there. Found it. Yeah, there he is right there. Something that bit you. Can we turn around by the We can't move because of that enemy. The enemy is stalking you. He's been his prey. And he begins to walk behind you. Why is it that every time you get somewhere, the same problems show up? Yeah. I know you got to knew this. However, you, if you, you can't change the problem without the power of the Holy Spirit. Why is it that sin seems to continue to permeate itself as if it's more powerful than God? How long have you had that bad temper? How long have you been struggling with attendance? How long have you been doing what you want to do when you want to do it? How long have you been dealing with that? Perhaps you've been bitten. And perhaps you're waiting on the power of the Holy Spirit. And what God is saying to you and to your children and to your children's children is that you will not receive my promise until you learn that I need your mind, body, and soul focused on me. I know you've been going to church and you think that's something special, but just because your body went to church, your mind still is a last year Christian. You didn't think about me, you didn't think about me until you got here. Uh -huh. I, I know you've been reading your Bible, but you have never read your Bible and actually saw yourself in your Bible and told your family, we got to do better as a family and start living your Bible. I know that you're going through this, I know, but I can't do anything with you because you want me and you can't sleep with him and sleep with me. We even gonna walk together. You might have to get on over here. I can't fall right now. Lord, I need your help. Well, I want to help you. But guess what? I want your mind, your body, and your soul focus all on me. I'm a jealous guy. And when you give me all of you, when you commit yourself to me, suddenly, stuff that was beating you up, suddenly child molestation won't have power over you anymore. Suddenly financial uh, irresponsibilities will be taken care of. Suddenly drugs will be able to be broken. Bondages will open up. Suddenly temples will be calm with the peace of God. Suddenly, somebody do something in your life. You won't be able to give nobody credit but me as your savior. Suddenly I'll move in a flash, but I gotta have all of you or none of you. Somebody gotta say amen right there. Watch this. Y'all shall still look at it. Y'all see, this is just before locked up in here. This is before locked up. I'm trying to unlock one more door. All right, let's try Acts 16. That, 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 that serpent just bite. They thought she was dead. And you alive. It's holy folk here talking about, I don't know why they ain't praising God. Because the Holy Spirit ain't fail. It, it, it's not going to fall because somebody mind ain't on God this morning. Mm -hmm. Somebody mind has something, some your problem has become so powerful that, that, that God said to you, no, I'm bigger than your problem. I can empower you. Do you remember what God told them in Luke 24? I believe around verse 49. He said, uh, what? He said, I said, I want you to go to Jerusalem until you be empowered from on high. I'm going to give you the power, but you got to get where I told you to get. Do you know he's not just talking about physically? This church is not going to catch on fire until the folks sitting on this church bring some fire into the church. Y'all say amen. And see, see, probably some of you now doing too good. Y'all can't give God glory. But, but until we as a people reach a point that we burn for the power of God in our life, God, God can't do nothing. Y'all stop looking around and what's wrong with y'all? Y'all would make me preach at 12 o'clock. I'm trying to say, this, 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 I'm talking to you. Praise God. I'm trying to help over here. Until you reach a point that you come to church and you're not looking around and see what everybody else is doing, trying to see who's saying amen, where everybody who like who, who got on what, and you actually come to church to praise God, the Holy Spirit is not going to fall in this house. But when folks come with their mind on Jesus and Jesus on their mind and stop playing in the house of God, then folks will come up here and put their bag of weed down, put their four houses down, put this down, they'll set it down, and they'll say, son, I feel free from what I used to be and who I am. Son. And I'm waiting one day. 
We come to church and everybody come to church with the Lord on their mind. I'm, wait, I'm tired of playing with folks. I'm tired of folks playing with me. So you, you've been bitter. You need to know God is the rich. He is the inoculation from the poison of this world. Y'all all right? And let me tell you something. God not going to open doors. He's not going to break bondages until you give him praise and glory to whom he belongs. And you play too much. And God said, I'm not going to work in your life. And guess what? You're not going to do anything in life without God. At 16. At 16. Watch that. At 16 to today. Watch what happened. You're not, until you learn to praise God, you're going to remain incarcerated in your own stuff. I would never come to the Lord's house. And I would never come to the Lord's house and not praise God. Amen. Anthony, if you have any Bible, can you work your Bible for me, Anthony? Acts 16, 26. Oh, uh, sorry, 25. If you will, watch your Bible say? Watch this. And at midnight, Paul. And at midnight, Paul. Hold on a minute. What did I say a while ago? God never going to do nothing for you until you give him praise. Amen. You will sit in your jail and watch that word some of you. You will sit in your jail where you incarcerate yourself with your own fears, your own ideology, your own bad attitude, your own way, your own theology. And nothing ever happened until we learn to give God praise. 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 And the Bible says that when we get everything in one, not, not, not only you not sin, it means that you got your mind on Jesus. Your heart is turned to God. And it means that your soul is at rest because of that peace with God. God's not going to do nothing new in your life. That's why you keep sinning and going back to your sin because the only thing that happened is that you came and made a public announcement and you went right back to your own private life that's full of sin and error. And because you're in your own private life and you're incarcerated in this stuff that you call life and joy and victory, then God said, I can't do nothing for you because I don't only want your mouth on Sunday, but I need your life on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I, I need your heart turn to me when it's time to make those decisions that don't nobody else know about. You are lying and the truth ain't in you. I need you to give me all of you and I'll do something for you in your life. For without me, you can't do anything. Yeah, have you ever felt like I keep going through the same stuff over and over again? I keep going through the same stuff over. There's some good days, there's some bad days. Why don't things be better? Why can't I have some joy and keep continuous joy? Because you're trying to live with Christ for a little while and live with the enemy for a little while. But I stopped by to tell you, God said, when you get in one place and on one accord, suddenly I'm going to move in your life and you don't have to worry about anything else because I got it all together. But as long as you sit there with your mouth closed, closed mouth, don't get fed. You need to understand it's time for you right now to give God Here's Paul and Silas, I believe. They're in jail. And you know, when we get in trouble, the dumbest thing you can do is stop coming to church. Well, I'm going through something. You know, it's one of my big sisters. You know, I, 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 I know she's learned that she had to be in one accord in one place. Because no matter of her ups and downs, when she have problems, <clears throat> I can genuinely tell. Because she won't to come to church, but she bring her husband to church. She said, you know, I ain't said much to you. Uh, but right now we're going through something as a family. And Carl, you coming with me this morning. And Carl, come on here and they'll sit down together. And they'll praise God. He said, all the kids are coming. And if I can bring the bulldog, I bring him too. Because it's, we're in the midnight hour. Somebody say amen. Yeah. We're in the midnight hour. The enemy done beat one of our kids. Done beat you, done beat me. We need to run to Christ and not away from Christ. Amen. You got to learn that when times get rough and you've been wounded, more than wounded, that is not the time to run from God. That is the time to run to God. Because God said, when you bring everything to me, suddenly I'm going to work it out. And I believe I can have them testify this morning. They tell you that God, way over in the midnight hour, did some stuff that I couldn't imagine God would ever do, but it did it for me, and God will do it for you. I can tell you on the hospital bed, on, 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 on the operation table, that a doctor stopped what he was doing. He said, I can't believe that artery went from 75% closed and it's open right now. I don't know who God is, but something happened. And suddenly the operation came to a halt. Somebody 
going to say to me tonight. I want you to do give it all to God. God will move in your life. Perhaps you don't need God, but I need him. Oh, I need him. Every hour, I need him. Paul and Silas need him. Anthony, what happened? The Bible said they did what? They, 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 they say praises in the midnight hour. Uh, you too sleep to praise God. At midnight, call somebody trying to help church and watch what happens.